Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the procession to Calvary. So in the last episode we finally got the... We finally got this magnificent ornate crown from the library bookkeeper. And then we got this cheap amethyst from the uh, girl who, whom we gave the pearl, because she's the uh, girl with a pearl earring. And that, and that's really, that's really it. Those are the most important things that we got, we got in the last episode. And also we got the boy, of course, so now we should be able to enter deeper into the basilica and maybe finally strike down the heavenly Peter. So without further ado, let's continue with the rest of the game here and let's give the magnificent ornate crown. I got you this tacky crown. That will perfectly cover my bald spot. Well, good for you. Thanks. Two down, two to go. Indeed. And here's you, here's your young boy. I got you this supple boy with rosy cheeks and a pearl little butt. Wonderful. There you go. Thanks. Now don't do anything inappropriate with the young young lad. Three down, one to go. Indeed, and here it is. I got you this gross amethyst. Don't say don't say that it's gross. That's not really a whole piece of jewelry, is it? Well, it is an amethyst. Frankly, if I can uh, if I can pin it to my tit, I'm not e I'm not interested. Okay. Uh, okay. So, never mind, folks. Never mind. We are not completely done with this. I did think. I do remember that and that that someone. Uh, th that the game called the this amethyst as a cheap amethyst, and they want expensive jewelry. But I was thinking that maybe they can't really tell if it's cheap or expensive or not. But I guess not. I guess they can uh, tell the difference. Okay, so... Okay, so we have to get something else for him. Uh, this cardinal here. Oop, can we talk to him some more? Yes, my child, how, how may we help? How may we help? Um, where can I find expensive jewelry around here? This is the south. There is expensive jewelry everywhere. Take a look around town. This is a land of opportunities. Yeah, okay. So they're not going to help me. Okay, so we are missing something else. What are we missing? It's not this dress, is it? No, it can't be the dress. It must be jewelry. That is not an appropriate bribe. We want fancy, fancy jewelry. Yeah, I thought so. I thought as much. Okay. Okay, okay. So let's see. Ah, uh, okay. It, it, it must be the... It must be the... Uh, don't take the sword out. It must be the treasure buried here. Somewhere. So we have to figure out this map. That must be it. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go... Let's go back to outside of town and uh, try to think about this some more. Okay, so, let's see. There's a bunch of stuff missing, and the whole thing is back to Ford. Lots of stuff missing. Well, there, well, there's no statue in here. I wonder if the map is inaccurate, or if the world is. Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? I wouldn't be surprised if the treasure was buried somewhere around here, but we can't even interact with the ground. And besides, we don't even have a shovel, assuming that we need one in order to dig a hole. But what to do with this amethyst then? A dainty emerald cut amethyst. Okay. No idea what to do with this. And we also, we can still feed the skunk by giving it this box. And then we can use the skunk to... Hmm... I think I got an idea. I think I got an idea where we can use the skunk. Oh, man, does this lady want this amethyst? No thanks. Ah, never mind. Even she can tell that it's, that it's cheap. Fair enough. Okay, well let's give this to the guys a box. Okay, we are friends again. So let's go back to town. 
and use the skunk in town. Now that everyone is outside and not shut in uh, in their homes. Okay, let's let's make the skunk fart before this crowd here. Let's see what let's see what will happen. Someone open a window. Okay, nothing happened. Maybe I just did it wrong. Maybe I should have done it done it like here or something. Or maybe inside one of these buildings. Assuming that the little guy even follows us. Well, let's get some more bugs. And I'm pretty sure that we are done here as well. We don't need to uh, mess around with the, the sacrificial satanic altar over there. And there is nothing else over here either that we want. We don't need any more pearls. Massive bell. That's the bell that the, that birdie used to summon the, uh, Satan, the devil. That's the biggest bell I, I have ever seen. Really? That's the biggest you have ever seen? Well, okay. A feline core assisted by an owl and a pipe and a pipe playing jester dressed marmoset. Okay. A fat pig smoking a pipe. Okay. If I don't bother them, they won't bother me. A dog clown question mark. Yeah, I guess we are just we are just done here. Let's just get the skunk. Okay, so, let's see if this little guy will follow us to any of these houses. Mm, yes, it does. Should we make it fart over here? In this room? Let's see what will happen. What is that god-awful stench? Okay, something is happening. Someone open a damned window before I before I seek pheasant all down my kegs. Pheasant? The heck are kegs? Well, I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Skunk. Okay, so now that window has been opened. But the question is, where is that window? I mean, we can't reach the key. We have to pick it up uh, through this window. Just as, just as I expected. Just like in the last game where we had to pick up something. Was it a guitar or something? Uh, in the four last things. But now, where is that window? Oh, it's here. Okay, pick up the key. Yoink. Whoa! What kind of animation was that? It looked like her hair coalesced into a hand-shaped knot to grab the key. Well, it kind of did look like that, yeah. Shh. If we don't draw attention to it, no one will notice. Oh, they will notice. It looked like a green trunk elephant wandered past and snapped up the key. <laughs> Look, it's a complicated animation. Yeah, very. <coughs> Excuse me. The whole arm is a single sprite with four bones. It needs to appear behind the body at one, at one end and in front of the body slash wall at the other. I'm a Macromedia Flash MX kind of guy. This fancy bone animation is still new to me. Okay, fair enough. Cut me some slack. That was really bad though. It was so bad. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I tried to make the animation look good, but it was difficult, and I got bored. So I decided to revert to my comically poor first attempt and use it as an excuse for a Macromedia Flash MX gag. You thought a gag about a 16-year-old piece of animation software was better than a decent animation? I did. Unbelievable. This is why you can't find a publisher. <laughs> Actually, I think you'll find that's because I'm a renegade and a lone wolf. Ah, yes, of course. You did contact a number of publishers, though. Shush. 
the word niche came up a lot. Don't tell them that. And the word no. Camera, switch return to last gameplay transition time 0.5. That guy has issues. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. But hey, we got the key. And I don't know what to do with this key at all. Oh. Maybe that's what a treasure chest that's been buried. An important looking golden key. I bet it opens something good. Well, it's better. It better open something good. Now, have we run into any uh, locked doors or anything? That we couldn't open before. I don't know. No idea. Hmm. I wonder, should we give should we give the key to someone? Like this snuffin' sniffin' snob here. I don't need to unlock that. Okay, so I need to unlock something with it. Okay, that makes sense. I just can't I just can't come up with any doors or chests or anything else that, that I could unlock with this. Hmm. There is nothing like here, right? In this gallery room. Hmm. Sure doesn't look like it. Wait, is that... Bernardo Pelotto's Pirna, the operator from the south, circa 1750. This is the painting from the... or the scenery from the map. Maybe we can use this to help us somehow? Can we use the map with the painting? They are the same, yes, exactly. Okay, so... Hmm? Uh -huh. Oh, I see. I see. The treasure was not actually buried uh, underground. It was a safe. That's very clever. There's a safe hidden behind the picture. Okay, so do we use the key to open that? Yes, we do. Nice. Now, now we got some treasure. What is that? <coughs> Excuse me again? Shiny. Yes, yes, but what is it? Is it a... Yoink? Yoink indeed. So what is it? A brush. I think it's missing a stone. Oh, you think? It's a perfect fit. Nice. Oh. Perfect indeed. Looks like an... Uh, looks like an adequate bribe to me. You know what? I was thinking the exact same thing. So let's go back to Basilica and give that last bribe to the last cardinal and then they should give us access to the Basilica. To the other side, please. Alright, here's your bribe. I got I got you this gorky brush. Nice. I'll take this one. Thanks. Wow, you have really exceeded our expectations on the bribery front. Yes, I didn't expect you to actually kidnap a human child. Well, we didn't really kidnap him, right? Well, I guess we did. Great work. I guess you can go in now. Well, we better. Try not to break anything. Have fun. Oh, I will. We will have fun, alright. And we are not gonna break any... Uh, we're not gonna bre break any stuff here. We're just gonna break one guy called Heavenly Peter. But anyway, let's look around. So we go back to this way. Angelic Quar. An Angelic Quar singing Francois Cooperin's Troisieme Le Conte Tenebres. How do you, how, how have you, however you spell that. La 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 mm -hmm. Bravo! 
Try not to be too loud with that shield, though. And I guess we can't enter this little chamber. Or here. Okay, guess we go this way. And there he is. The Heavenly Peter. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Who the hell are those? Hello, who's this then? I have no idea. But she seems innocent enough. Yes, I don't imagine she is likely to cause any trouble. Oh, you would be so wrong on that. Should we briefly abandon our post in order to acquire and consume ice creams? Yes, you should. Heck yes, we should. Yeah, you do that. You do that. Organist? A fancy organist playing Johann Sebastian Bach's A Prelude and Fugue in, uh, in A minor. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have to clear my throat every now and then. Okay, Heavenly Peter. Your time has come. What's up, Dick Watts? <laughs> Dick Watts. Uh, wistful lackey. A surprisingly casual and rather bored looking pink frogged lackey. Uh, psychophantic lackey. A creepy looking bald headed lackey. Well, he's creepy, I give you that. The heck is this? Bird. Jesus, it, it looks like it, it, has, it has lost its feathers. Eh, yeah, whatever. And Heavenly Peter? That's him. Heavenly Peter. Prepare to die. No wolf un truco necon kuwush. What? Spook what uit taxan. Is that supposed to be Latin? Heavenly Peter has graced us with the following sacred utterance. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I can make you rich. See you in hell, Peter. Eat lead, old man. Yippee ki yay. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Rich, you say? Hmm. Well, we are going to kill him. Eat lead, old man. See you in hell. I, I guess we're gonna go with this. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Oh, Jesus Christ. You bastard. And he's still living. Ah, never mind, he's dead now. Look at the state his body is in, Jesus, and that, that was only one slash. Are you going to shout for the guards or what? Why am I the one who always has to shout for the guards? You are just as capable of shouting for the guards as I am. I can't shout for the guards. My lips are cracked and my throat is parched from conversing with Peter all day. Oh, you don't think my throat is parched? My throat is just as parched as yours. There is no way your throat is even nearly as parched as mine. How could your throat possibly be even nearly as parched as mine? My throat could easily be at least nearly as parched as yours. Okay, so they continue arguing, and we just take the head of Heavenly Peter, and where is this? Nowhere, I guess. Hmm, more nice scenery. Luckily, no one seems to mind that we are carrying the head of a he Heavenly Peter. And across the ocean. The Church of Immortal John. Okay, so we are returning to, to the north. And inside this church. Was that Heavenly Peter's severed head? Sure looked like it. Great observation skills he got there. Fellow guards. And there's Immortal John. 
Yikes. Looks like you had a productive trip. I sure did. I even had a time to pick up a souvenir. Thanks. Looks like you have been pretty busy yourself. What happened to the whole all men are equal rhetoric? <laughs> yeah. Treating all men equally and working together to build a better future worked great for a while. We put out the fires and restored the crumbling city wall. We nursed back to health all the men who had been injured in the war. We managed to rebuild the entire town in a matter of days. Well, that sounds very, very good. It was magnificent. Oh, I bet. But people couldn't get the idea of an all-powerful leader out of their heads. They couldn't bring themselves to believe that such a, that such great things, such powerful things, could be achieved simply by showing compassion for one for one another. So they praised me for all the good they had done. All hail immortal John. They kissed my hands and bowed at my feet. They gave me gifts and wrote songs about my greatness. They vowed to do whatever I asked of them. Well, it didn't take long for that power to go to my head. Yeah, that kind of power would corrupt anyone. I began asking, uh, I began asking personal favors of them. Just little things at first. Bathing me in almond milk. Bathing in milk. Okay. Fanning me, fanning me with palm leaves and feeding me seedless grapes. But the more they treated me like a king, the more I believed I was one. And the more I believed I was a king, the more I acted like a tyrant. Are you almost done? Anyway. Long story short, I'm the, I'm the bad guy now. <laughs> well, shit. I really don't care about any of this. Can I go now? Well, no one is stopping you, is there? Actually, I, I have another job for you, if you're interested. Does it involve murdering people? It sure does. Then count me in. What's the gig? Last week, the people organized a great party to celebrate my birthday. Well, that sounds nice. I have judged their efforts to be insufficient. The jelly did not... The jelly did not possess the desired amount of wobble. I failed to pin the tail on the donkey. Well, that sucks. And the magician was unable to make my sadness disappear. Dramatic pause. Okay. Punish them. Okay, so did we get another quest? I thought I thought we would be done with this game now, after we killed Heavenly Peter. Home sweet home. No, oh, so we just took, up, took our sword out. I can't access the inventory. I can't even... I can't even... Uh, throw, uh, throw away the sword. Okay, I guess we just... I don't know. Murder people. Uh, precariously uh, perched poet. I guess we can just... <laughs> yeah, we can only kill him. <laughs> Jesus Christ! A uh, preacher with a big cross and a baby in a book. Okay, that's random. Preacher with a lamb. I guess we're just, we're just supposed to kill everyone. I would really rather stay out of this. Well, okay, I guess we leave you out of that. Fair enough. And, oh yeah, these guys from the last game. Some wealthy landowners relaxing and relaxing in and around in a muddy pool. Well, enough being lazy. You lazy, uh, fat rich people. Oh my god, are we supposed to kill everyone here? All these people from the last game. Ah, oh, his statue is still here, when he was still, when he was a normal peasant. This guy. Yeah, finally we can kill this guy. Ouch, Jesus. All his intestines all, all, all over the damn uh, road. A man drinking alone? Well, 
He will continue drinking in hell. Ah, the procession to Calvary. So this was the end of the game, yeah. A friendly peasant. Well, he's now a dead peasant. Oh my, oh my god. A game by Joe Richardson. Do we kill her? Yes, we do. Featuring artwork by all these people. All these artists. Two heterosexual males. Oh yeah, they must be heterosexuals, alright. Bonding over the act of removing fish from their natural habitat. habitat. Okay. Well, not anymore. Off with your heads. Featuring music by all those people. I really don't feel like killing this blind man, but I guess we must, if we want to see all the credits. Joe would like to thank everyone who backed this project on Kickstarter, especially especially Stuart. Stuart Ashen, Margaret Barbier, Daniel Belcher, Yesevan Buren, 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 Mark Clerkin, Tim Davis, David Dew, Greg Gately, Lake Kubilius, Matthew Manapes, Sorry if I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of these names. Matthew Menapes, I think that's uh, pronounced. David Van Op Oppergen, Jack Richardson, Selby Richardson, Vitas Varnas, and Thomas Weber, who were extra generous and or and or hel helpful. And who is this? The new Pie King. Well, he's dead king now. That's the end. You won, kinda. Are you sure? But I I want to kill more people. There must be more folks we can behead. Can we go over here? No, we can't. Shit. Well, I guess that really is the end, folks. That really must be the end. We can't even enter this house. Like we could in the last game. Hmm, okay. Well, I guess we really, really are done with this game. Okay, fine. So, can I... Instructions. Oh yeah, okay, it's that. Okay, I just... I, I was just thinking that maybe I should now go back to the... Uh, main menu somehow. Well, okay, just a moment, folks. Okay, like that. Okay, so that was the procession to Calvary, ladies and gents. Really funny game, and I would even say that this that this was a better experience than the four last things. Because compared to this, the four last things felt like an experiment. The game was uh, slightly shorter. The jokes in that were not as uh, funny compared to the procession to Calvary, or at least I chuckled out loud to some of the jokes here in the procession to Calvary, but not so much in the four last things. At least, actually, I don't even remember that many jokes from the last game, but I do remember quite a few from this one. But then again, I just finished the game, so maybe that's why. And this game was also considerably harder as well. Some of the puzzles were rather hard to figure out, like the treasure map one, but that was actually very, a very clever idea. That was a very clever puzzle, so I really like that. So the four last things kind of felt like an experiment where Joe Richardson was testing that what he can do with all the Renaissance art. How he can animate them, can he make the jokes funny, how he can make the puzzles, and so on and so forth. And the procession to Calvary felt... It feels like Joe Richardson... Uh, I don't know. It kind of felt like he had a better idea what he wanted to do with the procession to Calvary, and how he wanted the game to uh, look like what kind of humor he was after, and so on. That's kinda how I'm feeling. The procession to Calvary was overall a better experience to me than Four Last Things. Even though Four Last Things is not a bad game, don't get me wrong. I just think that the procession to Calvary is, well, it's obviously a, a little bit longer. It took me four episodes to beat Four Last Things, and this was my... This was my uh, seventh episode, I think. Yeah, this is episode seven. The jokes were funnier in my opinion, and some of the puzzles here were considerably more difficult than the ones in Four Last Things. I mean, I even have to go and take a peek at the walkthrough. Uh, was it in the last episode or the one before that? But I had to do that at least once, while in Four Last Things I didn't need to do that even once. But naturally both games used Renaissance art in a very clever and funny way. 
I really like how the Renaissance paintings and characters and sceneries were used in both of these games. The humor was nonsensical and absurd in Monty Python way, which I really like. But there's not really that many, well actually not any, interesting characters in the game. Hell, we didn't even learn the name of our protagonist in this game, and we only learned the name of the first game's protagonist in this one, because he was referred to as Immortal John, so I guess his first name was John. And all the other characters are basically just there to move the plot or just to be killed in a terrible and funny way. But I don't really mind that too much, because I was expecting that. I just wanted to experience some Monty Python-esque like absurd humor, and that's what I got, and I'm happy with that. Oh, and the classical music in the background was also uh, very nice to listen to. I don't often listen to classical music very often, but when I do listen to it in a game like this, for example, I can appreciate it, because even though I don't listen to it very often, I do like classical music. And what was also interesting about this one especially was that apparently there is two ways how you can play this game. You can either kill basically everyone who can be killed, at first I thought that that was going to be the easy way to play the game, like at the very start uh, with the guy who was using the oars that you needed for the boat so the guy would take you to the south. He was using them as his crutches, and we could have just killed him and, and taken the crutches from his dead body, or you could do what we did and try to pursue the other people around him to convince him to give us the crutches. And that's what we did, so I thought that killing everyone would be the easy mode, so to say, but apparently that was not the case, because when we killed that one guy with, who had the pliers inside his body and was tortured over the open fire, uh, when we did that, the people simply shut their doors to us and we couldn't enter any of the buildings in the town. And I didn't see any way how we could have proceeded in the game anymore. So I would like to believe that there would have been a way to continue on with the game without having to do what we did and reload the last save. I would like to believe that that was the case, but I'm not sure. It honestly looked like that there was nothing we could have done anymore at that point, and we were totally screwed. But now that I'm finished with this game, and four last things, I'm gonna watch some other people's let's plays and see if their playthroughs were any different. But yeah, right now I don't have anything else to add to the procession to Calvary or the four last things at this point, and I am going to make a my thoughts on video of both the procession to Calvary and four last things and talk about them both in the same video because they are so similar when it comes to the music, humor and the art style, of course. But anyway, that's really all that I have to say about these two games at this point, so I'm going to end this let's play here. So, thank you for watching my blind let's play of the procession to Calvary by Joe Richardson and see you next time in a new adventure.